And we had about how many news organizations covering this event? Three. We had cameras from uh, TV. We had newspapers. Our media release went out an hour before our uh, event. There is a lot of interest in covering this kind of groundswell organizing. So great job today. Effective? Yeah. Read Indivisible. It really works. Read Indivisible. It really works. Indivisible. Uh, this document that its creators hope uh, will be a sort of a how-to guide for resisting the Trump agenda. It's basically the thing you need to know about in politics right now if you are looking for signs of whether there will be a significant anti-Trump movement in this country. Part of that we will see in terms of the big Washington mobilization that is expected the day after the Trump inauguration. But part of it will happen in a disambiguated way all around the country. We're starting to see the first signs of that now. We're definitely seeing the organizing to try to make that happen uh, as we speak. Joining us now is Ezra Levin. He's a former policy advisor to Congressman Lloyd Doggett. He's one of the authors of Indivisible. Uh, Ezra, thanks for being here. I appreciate Th it. Thank you so much for having me. Love um, to be here. Did I get anything wrong in terms of explaining sort of what you're trying to do? No, I don't know what else to say now. It seems like you covered it all. But all right, well, good night. It. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice yeah. to see you. Well, why, why, did you, why did you decide to do this? And, about, and how many people were involved in creating this? Oh, there were at least two or three dozen people involved in doing this. We, we decided to do it because we were going through the stages of grief, as many liberals were after the election. Uh, and we were also hearing these uh, stories of people starting up new organizations to actually push against Trump. These were secret Facebook groups or their mailing lists. And they were trying to figure out what can we do mm -hmm. to make sure that Congress doesn't enact Trump's agenda. They knew about petitions. They knew about maybe calling their members of Congress. But they didn't really know what the next step was beyond that. Uh, as a former congressional staffer, I have basically no skills, but I do know how Congress works. Uh, and I and a lot of other congressional staffers got together and said, look, we know what works. We saw the Tea Party rise up. We saw them implement really effective strategies and tactics to prevent an incredibly popular president's agenda from being implemented. This can work for us, the progressive movement today, uh, if it worked for the Tea Party eight years ago. And it's, it seems to me in reading this, I feel like you're trying to sort of gently um, dispel some popular myths about what must affect members of Congress. You're basically saying, listen, form letters, don't bother. Online petitions, nice, but it's not the thing that actually makes a difference to the member of Congress on the ground. Is it fair to say? That, that's absolutely right. So the Tea Party really understood uh, a couple things about how their members of Congress thought. One, they understood that their members of Congress cared about them, their constituents, and not other people. And two, they understood that they weren't setting the agenda for the next eight years. The Democrats controlled the House, they controlled the Senate, they had the presidency, but the Tea Party could play defense. They could respond to everything coming down the pike and say no. Uh, and so that's a crucial strategic point that you make. You basically say, listen, we as liberals would love to focus on a positive agenda for how we'd like to do things different. But as long as there's zero power in Washington to do that, there's no point in focusing on that now. Let's instead focus on saying no to what the people in power are going to do exclusively. Uh, yeah, so I don't think progressives should give up the, the idea of a bold progressive vision for the future. I think that's important. But if you're an advocate on the ground and you're talking to Representative Goodlot or anybody else, what you're going to be doing is responding to what Congress is doing today. Yesterday, that was trying to make Congress even more corrupt than Congress already is. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, it's going to be something bad, too. So you have the power to just say, this is unacceptable. And we've seen that happening all over the country now. You're talking about a bubbling up movement. We're seeing it. Yesterday was the first proof of concept. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Have you seen, in terms of the direct response to this, obviously, you've got this posted online. So you know how many people have downloaded it. You know how many people have read it. But are you seeing, in terms of groups forming or other people using this work? Uh, it's phenomenal. i got to say, we've been blown away. We, we put up a Google Doc two and a half weeks ago. Google immediately crashed. We threw up a website just so people had a way to download it uh, and get the information. In the last two weeks that we've had that up, there have been over 600,000 page views. There have been 130,000 people who have downloaded the guide. But like you said, the really exciting thing is that there are all of these groups spreading out all across the country and popping up. We've had in the last 24 hours since we've been collecting groups that are trying to resist Trump, 350 folks register. My phone 350 buzz, groups? Groups. 350 groups all over the country. My phone buzzes every time a new one goes in and it's been vibrating since we We've been talking. Every few minutes, more people are coming online. And what they look like is what the Indivisible Roanoke group looks like. They're in Milwaukee. They're in Florida. They're in New York. They're in California. They're in Pennsylvania. We've covered just about every single state. And we have subscribers in literally every single congressional district in the country.
Pretty good for a Google document that you whipped up with a few friends. Yeah. It's not what we did. Yeah. It's really what it's the, you're tapping it's the into move, something that people The movement already for. existed. We're just speaking to it a Mr. little bit. Mr. Levin, former policy advisor to Congressman Lloyd Doggett, and uh, a man involved in um, a phenomenon that I'm not sure the Beltway has caught on to yet, but I think they're about to hear from soon. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you so nice much. Nice to hear you. All right, lots to come. Lots going on in the news tonight. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.